All right, y'all, we're live. It is Sunday at the Charleston Boat Show. This is the food boat, but you're not on the food boat. I'm Derek, your host, and today we have Colin back with us again, but I don't think he's making cocktails today. I'm not. I'm dry january Dry january So close to being done. Man, he did an amazing job with, what was it, the Papa Dublé last time. Papa Dublé. That was like one of my favorite formats of a video ever. Colin came in and was like, I could have done a mocktail, but yeah, before we before we get started, I got to make a cocktail. And we made a cocktail and then went into cooking. So, uh, what are we waiting for? We're going to be uh, waiting a little minute for. Uh, did we confirm this is actually producing heat? Oh wait, oh, that one's on. That's on medium. Turn it on high. High all the way. All the way. Get it rolling. Is it Is plugged in? Or or sure it's plugged in? That one's hot. Oh, you're, you're probably hot on the one you're on, too, then. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be standing here for an indeterminate amount of time waiting for this oil to be hot. <laughs> so, that's going to be fun. Who's, who's got better hair? Mine, uh, this is the longest mine's been since college, I think. <laughs> Same here. But you went to a college that you could grow it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't go to prison camp for yeah. college, but um, yeah, I probably need to cut it. I might do like a week or at least a few days of mullet. You know, you don't get you don't get a lot of chance to have this much length in the back. Shit, I forgot to turn the compressor on. Sound probably is terrible. Gotta have the compressor. Especially with that generator going. All right, let's uh, maybe do an intro again. <laughs> Sorry about back. that, y'all. We're back Sunday at the boat show. This is the food boat, but we're not on the food boat. We're at the Charleston Boat Show in North Charleston. We're here with Colin back from July, but apparently he's doing dry January, so no, no cocktails. Featured cocktail today. No featured cocktails today. Um, what fish are we cooking today, Colin? Uh, today we have, we were going to do black sea bass, but as happens, the fish shop did not have any black sea bass. So I got vermilion snapper, which are uh, kind of the bread and butter of the Charleston commercial fishery, probably. Um, they're sold frequently as red snapper because they are snapper and they are red. So we had actual legit red snapper here yesterday. Nice. But it's they- good. This is, um, this is the vermilion. This is, yeah, the vermilion snapper. I went ahead and scaled, got them, cut the hard fins off, cut the gills out. And they're ready to go in some oil. And you're doing the whole fish? Yeah, we're going to score it and do a whole fried uh, vermilion snapper, coat in a little rice flour before we fry it, and then we're going to do a Vietnamese herb salad with um, some fresh, or with some uh, nunchuck uh sauce which is like a spicy garlic fish sauce dressing nice so nice a little vietnamese uh influence on our lunch here on this beautiful sunday unfortunately our oil is now at like lukewarm bath temperature not quite where we can do any cooking yet but uh we'll get there <laughs> so if y'all got questions while we're waiting on oil questions Colin might be able to field a question or two. Is that a uh, vermilion snapper? That's a vermilion snapper, yep, probably. That's what we had last night. Nice. Where'd you have one last night? You caught it or cooked it? or Cooked it. Nice. They're great. Yeah, they call them, uh, the commercial guys call them beeliners, which I've heard is either because they beeline for your bait or you can, a basket liner, you line your, fill your basket with them because, but yeah. Yeah, great fish, great fish to eat. They're pretty uh, pretty local to Charleston. There's not a whole lot of other places. Uh, pretty much year-round. Yeah. There's one of the fish that you can catch year-round. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I like doing them whole like this, uh, either roasted or fried. You know, they're they don't. A lot of them that you see in the in the market aren't huge, so you get a lot of you get a lot more yield if you eat the whole fish and pick it off the bone instead of filleting it. But it's excellent filleted. You can do it raw. It's really versatile. And what kind of, the one ten uh, now. Sauce are you going to prepare today? So I've got a. Uh, while we wait for that heat to heat up, we can get the rest of the prep out here. So I did work back at the house with the knives and saved it for out here. Love it. It's so good, whether you're a chef or whatever. There's several scenes in there. I don't cook professionally anymore, but um, there's several scenes in there that gave me like legit nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, when that printer won't stop going and that uh, the Christmas scene or whatever is also <laughs> triggering to a lot of people. I feel like. <laughs> Pressure. It's a it's a tough business. You gotta yeah. you gotta be there every day, and you gotta be consistent. You can't. I mean, you throw that or what? You can delegate to good people, but it's hard if you're not there, really, as a restaurant owner. One twenty. Right. You get to what? One thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big sous vide fan on fish. Um, you know, some of the steakier fish can handle it, but uh, you know, something like this, it only takes two minutes in a pan more than that. But yeah, um, on some kind of beef, I like it. Slow cooks. Uh, we're making a little nuk chom sauce, which is a Vietnamese fish sauce dressing. And I chopped up a bunch of uh, the cilantro stems, uh, garlic, and some hot chilies, red and green. So that's kind of the base here. And then we got some limes. Middleton, shout out to Quinn Middleton. Is that what Alex knife. Got for Christmas? No, I picked this up at the uh, that barbecue smoke barbecue festival the other day. I heard Alex got me one for Christmas, but I've not seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, he Next he, yeah. he calls me and goes, "I want to get Colin a knife for Christmas." I said, "Look up Quentin knives. Look up Middleton knives." And uh, I heard you got one coming. Yeah, I'm excited. That's a uh, love this little one. Um, very sharp, great balance, beautiful. I mean, look at the wood on that thing. Makes a great product. It's a local knife maker, Quinn Middleton. So, chilies, garlic, lime, cilantro stems. That's all mixed in there. Huh? Yep. Garlic. Chili seeds. Yeah. Thought you were gonna make it hot on us for a minute. It's uh gonna be spicy, probably. It's how it's supposed to be. Can't dumb it down, you know. <laughs> so if you want, we've been filming the other episodes, and they're on the food boat on YouTube. So right now they're just unedited raw from the live stream system, but I'll go back and edit them later. So the other ones that you missed throughout the weekend, if you want to see them, you can check out on the Okay. Um, bunch of fish sauce. This stuff is the nectar of the gods. It's uh doesn't smell great. You get that down from by the office? The, the yeah, I there? get this from H and L locally. It's an Asian market on Rivers Avenue. Yeah, right next to the Sherwin Williams. Yep. They've got probably 20 kinds of fish sauce. This is my personal yeah. preference. Three crabs. It's one with the three, three crabs on it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
Sure, sure. By all means. And uh, McKenna, if you give them a sticker, if you all are sticker people, well, sometimes, sometimes I don't want those bags. We're going to go about equal parts lime and fish sauce and, I don't know, a couple, four cloves of garlic, a couple tablespoons each of cilantro skin, stems, stems and chilies in there, and then some sugar. Now, this sugar looks easier to open than... I remember the last time... It's pink sugar, that's salt. Oh, that's salt. <laughs> that's the sugar? That's sugar. I remember last time you were struggling with the sugar. Yeah, yeah. This one's... Uh, <laughs> put everything in containers this time. Uh, got any utensils down here? Like a spoon, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah Four. Sure, you want everything. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not as well prepared as I'd like to be. <laughs> so, on the list, there's... This isn't Kevin, this is Colin. I'm not Kevin. Kevin, Kevin had Except something. Except that it was going to be Italian. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Kevin had something come up. Call an audible. He's doing the F&D business. So I called Cal and I said, can I get you off, off the couch? <laughs> My lazy Sunday. Beautiful day. It is. It's, uh, I went out to the dock to clean up and scale these snappers and... It about blew the scales off them. I didn't even need the scaler. It was so windy out there. It is ripping on the water. So it's good to be up here. I honestly thought I was going to be cooking on the uh, food barge. So glad I'm not. Because <laughs> it would be breezy. So what he's referring to is, is, so the food boat is my channel. It's a small YouTube channel where I cook with chefs out of the water. So I've, I've got a barge specifically set up for cooking on the water. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. It so, was newly renovated, right? It's almost done. <laughs> it's, it's going through renovations. So this was a chance to get out and do something while I can't film because it's being renovated. That sounds like a fun thing to do. Yeah, this summer I'll be going from Scoper to Buford with the boat. Oh, I didn't know you're officially doing that. What's your departure plan? When uh, are you leaving? To be determined. I'm going to be up I gotta be in Moorhead for Big Rock, so I gotta be oh, uh, nice. probably leaving right uh, right after Memorial Day, and uh, I'll hit up Big Rock, do some uh, Big Rocks, the Big Marlin tournament up in Moorhead, North Carolina. Oh, wow. So hit up Big Rock, um, and then work my way down. Uh, Are you going to the Charleston uh, Wine and Food Festival? Uh, I'll. Not have a booth. I'll just be walking around right now. I sell food for a living today. Sells meat. So yeah, not fish though. It's tricky business, fish. Oh yeah. It's uh, highly perishable. It turns out. Do you have a bottle of water? They're called fish mongers too, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, not a lot of things get mongered. Fish, cheese. <laughs> Thank you. Fish sauce is quite salty, so a little water helps cut it back a little bit. But you can use this stuff on a lot of things as a dumpling sauce, dressing for like fish, poultry, meat, whatever. Just on rice, dip for like lettuce wraps. It's good stuff. Smell of fish sauce. Oh yeah, it's got a assertive scent. I'm moving the camera in like I can smell it if I bring it in. Mm. <laughs> if you get too close, you'll be able to smell the camera eventually. <laughs> All right, how are we coming? All right, one ninety. Oh, it's 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 coming up faster than I thought. Yeah. Um. So the show gave me a stipulation. No complaint, so. We're working with Walmart's uh, finest two burner college uh, cooker no over here. And then I had to make it do on 110 instead of 220. So I was like, oh, this is, this is a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so, love a good challenge. <laughs> oh, get a video of that. <laughs> oh. We got We're recording live. <laughs> Yeah, 
Where are you guys from? Uh, well, we grew up in the New York, New Jersey area. Nice. Now we live down here. Gotcha. Part, part of time in Nashville. Perfect. Love Nashville. So I got lots of Italian recipes. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing like Jersey Italian. No. Uh, I still live in Hobo, kids. I hate to say, the only real big thing I missed out here, Jim, is cannoli. Oh, yeah. I'm a Proper cannoli. And I got a last name that starts in a vowel and ends in a vowel. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. When I, when I go to food shows and they got cannolis out, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're hard to find down here. Have you ever been to Armando's? Yes. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was um. Uh, Melfi's. Melfi's. Melfi's downtown. It's just it's just clean water. I can dump it right. Here, here's a hole. I'm putting it in the trash. I'm putting it in the hole. Yeah, it's like a ricotta and like it's a ricotta and semolina dumpling essentially. They are delicious. Have you been to Obstinate Daughter? No, not Obstinate Daughter. Uh, Huh? Wild olive. You've been out there? Uh, yes, yeah. That's good. It's not obviously traditional red sauce joint, but. Yes, nudie are delicious. I've never attempted to make a nudie, but essentially you just spoon ricotta into a tray of semolina flour and it congeals around it, from my understanding. Got some quality utensils here from Dollar General. Okay. <laughs> Mm, Stella's is good. Yeah. I'm just doing a little, uh, putting a little wood skewer inside the fish's gills here, face here, just to, uh, it's just going to make them stand open so I can stand them up on the plate when it's done. After I fry them. So plate presentation is important? Yeah, I mean, spend all this time making this food. Got to make it look good before you eat it, right? For the Insta and all. All right. What are we at? 220. All right. I'm going to give these guys just a quick little uh, score. Make them cook evenly. Let the breading kind of get in there. Here. Is there a trick on how deep you go? I'm going basically to the spine. I mean, you're not trying to bear down on it, but uh, you feel it. And yeah, it's pretty easy, and that just kind of opens up the the meat and makes it easier to get off the bone. Got vermilion. It's well, no, it's vermilion snapper. Vermilion snapper. 
Yeah, black sea bass are typically uh, around this time of year, but the fish sauce sold, or the fish shop sold out of them. So. All right. We are getting there, folks. Oh. So that goes all the way through to both kills. Yeah, just kind of propping it open there. Attempting to. And then we're going to curl them up a little bit in the oil so they'll kind of stand up and we can dress them. We're going to serve this with a little uh, herb salad here. So I've got cilantro leaves that I picked off the stems. The stems I chopped up and put in there. Uh, so about, I don't know, what is that? Two cups? I got some sad basil from my basil garden that's still uh, making it through and some mint. Add those guys. And then I got... Uh, some Fresno chilies for a little red color and some green onions that I've very finely uh, shredded, chiffonaded there. And some of those guys, just the green part pretty much. And then some radishes that I sliced really thin. I'll try and keep them in water. I feel like they're going to get soggy then. But I don't want water in the salad. So, it's just a light little salad to go on top of it, really fresh. Don't want to overpower the fish too much. But, um, yeah, it's be a great summer dish since it's, uh, what is it, 70 degrees in Charleston today in January. <clears throat> All right. Chug along, 250. Can't really get that on the screen. There we go. It's hard to see. station is a happy station. So how long is it going to take to get from Beaufort to Beaufort? I don't know how long it's going to take, but I know how long I'm going to take. <laughs> what are you doing, in a month? Two I, months? I took two months off. Nice. Well, that'll be awesome. Yeah. I imagine I'll be making an appearance somewhere along that route. Yeah. Conscripted, is that the word when you get a... Shanghai? Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the... Uh, how fast does the old food boat go? I don't know with all the wind sail we just had. Uh, yeah, it depends on the wind direction and current. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, six, seven knots is a good figure. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Are there places to sleep overnight? Uh, yeah, so... Several years ago, um, I used to have a dock building business, and I, uh, I bought a barge out of New Bern, North Carolina, and Huck finned it from New Bern to Charleston. So it's almost the same route, but Beaufort to Beaufort sounds better, so I just extended the route a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, there's uh, we'll be stopping, uh, we'll start it in New Bern actually, then go to Beaufort, go to Moorhead, uh, Swansboro. Um, where uh, some other stops are like Wrightsville Beach, Southport, Wilmington, uh, Holden Beach. Uh, and then I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to run out because I'll hit up like Myrtle Beach on the ICW, heading down to uh, McClellanville, Georgetown. 
Um, but then I don't know if at like Georgetown, I want to pop out Winyall Bay and go up real quick and hit up Merle's Inlet and whatnot and yeah. then head back down. See where you are on schedule, I reckon. I, I think that's the big thing is to <laughs> see what kind of pace we're keeping. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so. Now, is there an advantage to keeping the head on? Your um, head or it off? A little more yield. There's some good meat in the cheeks and in the collar here and all that area. Presentation. Some people like it. Some people don't want their food looking at them. <laughs> I prefer to look mine in the eyes. <laughs> Two seventy. You looking for three hundred? You going hotter? Nah, three fifty. Three fifty. Yeah, yeah these fish. are fairly small fish, so yeah. you don't want to probably go a little higher than that because they're they're going to drop the temperature down fairly quickly. Yeah. So should have brought my torch. No, no open flame. Sorry. No open flame. I mean. <laughs> We did have a disaster. Oh, it looks like they just ditched the tents all together. They're just gone. Uncovered. Yeah. Baking in the hot sun on the blacktop. That's, I, my feet actually hurt from the blacktop. From standing on it, you mean? Oh, frick. Yeah, yeah. All day, yesterday, all day, Friday. I'm. T yeah, that's what line cooking is like, uh, standing on concrete. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time, but... Young man's game. <laughs> this stuff's also excellent on like a fish crudo or a tartar. Really, uh, the salt and the sour really make it pop. <laughs> We're at soft crack stage on this thermometer, which is apparently a candy thermometer. Love a good soft crack. <laughs> was this a buy today? Was this? A... Yeah. She was using it to make yogurt. I see that. Yeah. Oh. Soft ball thread. Soft. Hard ball. Soft crack. Hard crack. And then you're trying to get to deep fry. <laughs> yeah, is deep fry on there? It's oh, way up there. What if I don't speak Celsius? How am I supposed to know what deep fry is? American. Fortunately, they got a line for it. <laughs> uh, your tent looks like it's well installed. Uh, they, they drove. The stakes, or they I would hope the... they do. I don't understand that. They got a really good hammer guy. Well, they... <laughs> Should not let uh, Celia, my partner, see these very well behaved rescue dogs. Yeah. It's mine are not well behaved. Improved boat. Yeah. Not improved boat's not done yet. Yeah. Trying to get Michael out there this past week, but he he didn't come because I had all this stuff going on. So Hutch is gonna come. Firing a twelve volt. Nah. Are you gonna actually run the generator through the? You're gonna run generator power through the whole thing. Well, Alex brought, so we'll, we'll put a battery bank and just run. Sweet. And we'll so the generator and the panels can run to an inverter yeah right that's for the lithium batteries and you'll be set yeah yeah alex originally sent me like the stuff and he's like like it, it was like fifteen thousand dollars yeah I'm like no 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 i don't know if you realize the scope of this project <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what fifteen thousand is to the rest of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, are you going to move on it full time? I definitely would. Yeah. I'll move on to it full time and pay you rent. <laughs> <laughs> Had an interesting little uh, boating experience yesterday for your on the water. We, uh, my folks bought an intrepid little walk around and we were, my brother was driving. No, no name's name. We were a little bit north of, uh, up near Capers Island, and apparently there's a giant sandbar that sticks out into the middle of the river now, or the intercoastal. So you're the second person I heard well, the, the sandbar this last weekend. The uh, 
the Cito guy said he also ran aground there, so I didn't feel so bad. But we ended up with a 35 foot boat on dry land. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Good times. Shout out to about US. You having streaming issues? They're saying I am. The upload's a little bit slow, but it shouldn't be too bad. Not what you want. I'm just letting them know I see what they're saying, but there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. That's what happens when you're in South Carolina and they only have uh, a few satellites covering our territory. Yeah, South Carolina is great for many things, but digital and physical infrastructure, not among them. <laughs> Just drive across the border on any of our major highways. <laughs> North Carolina, smooth. South Carolina. <laughs> they give us, our roads are in such great shape that they give us a free windshield every year. But Let's, that's like that's the insurance policy, like in South Carolina. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm rocking two chips currently. I don't know about you. Yeah, I'm due for my annual windshield. Sometimes windshields here look like you drove through Baghdad. <laughs> I mean, just look. Like... <laughs> Let's not get started on the bridges, which are keeping us from falling to a watery depth. <laughs> How's the crowd been out here? Is it busier today or now? Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to crowds. I was facing the camera, so you have to ask this one. How's the crowd? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think they can hear you. 300. How's the crowd? The are you about to give us a whole update? You're about to go like weatherman, weather lady Michaela over here. All right. Where are we at, temp wise? 300. You can't just drop the fish? We are getting there. Huh? <laughs> He's like, go ahead and repeat that. What did you say? So you just can't drop the fish? It'll get I mean, there eventually. You want a really oily fish? Yeah, you want a greasy fish? <laughs> <laughs> Use a little lid action here. That probably help us. These are fun pans. What are these? Yeah, you gonna play with that pan? Oh are you just using it as a lid? I'm using it as a lid. It's a very nice looking lid. Perfect lid. I don't think that's the endorsement they're looking for. Uh, what are these things? That's Castaway. Cool. <laughs> Made right down the street from your office. Nice. Are they carbon steel? What is that? Yeah, carbon steel. Nice. Apparently, it's multi-purpose. Can be used as a lid. Yeah. For a double boiler set up here. That's what. Uh, yeah, those are cool. If they use, I would take a. I would take a set of those for compensation for my contributions to the channel. You know. <laughs> just no, just a note. <laughs> I, uh, I influenced Alex to get you a freaking knife. That, that is good looking out, buddy. Good looking out. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely we're getting there now. Uh, come on, Mike.
Mike. Got a little rice flour, some pink salt notes here. That's what you're breading it with? Yeah, just going to do a light coating. As it gets there. Yeah, yeah, that's they're asking how to get it. So they, but they asked you specifically. <laughs> they, they got the link. You just got to tell them. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are they supposed to use? You're supposed to use the QR code or the link in the description. To that, get and what gets them 10% off? Food vote 10. Yep. Yeah, you got it right that time. <laughs> So yeah, Colin, Food Book 10 gets you 10% off on a Castaway pan. Oh, nice. Nice. Check those out. 320. We're ripping now, folks. Does the new and improved barge have food? Does it have uh, guest quarters on it? Or is it just you? It's just me. I'm selfish. Mm -hmm. Need a tent on the front, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring a cot. Will you uh, I'll I bring pipe a, some air conditioning into my tent? I'll bring an inflatable mattress for you. <laughs> I think we take it to the Gulf Stream, man. I think that people would like to see that. Got some tuna. <laughs> I mean, I've Colin. Colin has been on some of my barges before, and that's a bold thing for him to say. It was worse. The weather was worse in the harbor during that Christmas parade than it was in the Gulf Stream a lot of days. <laughs> so I know she can take a wave, <laughs> and it won't be icy cold water either. <laughs> Do I have that picture? The elf on the shelf? Yeah. Do you have that picture? I don't know where. Probably. We got to pause for a second while he finds that picture. Because I'm sure you'll be better equipped than what you were dressed in that night. Yeah. <laughs> in a child sized elf costume. I have no idea where a picture of it is. Three thirty. Uh. He's not looking up the recipe. He is, however. I don't do recipes. Using Food Boat Ten as his promo code. One of these amazing castaway carbon pants. carbon steel. Did you find the picture? No. I'm trying to think where it would be. Is it on the work Instagram? Maybe. Oh, it's definitely on your work Instagram. Because you don't live, you don't work in a hostile work environment at all. No. No. Given that I'm HR, there's a lot of. Freeway or uh, leeway. You're officially HR. As official as anything is. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> officially, we don't have HR. Hmm. <laughs> It's mostly just me spamming real estate listings. There's the original picture. Look at him. Which was made into a cutout that's posted around the office all over the place.
Oh, man. All right, let's get some flour on these guys and get rolling. Oh, rice flour's got like a really weird feeling that I don't like. Get it in the cracks all over the place. Really get Derek's station messy here. You're the last one. Not right, good. Jeff has a newborn baby in the Nick unit. I guess we should be paying attention. No boy, no. Yeah, the action's happening now. Okay. Getting ready. Do you add anything to the flour? I just seasoned it lightly with some uh, with some salt. What kind of flour do you use? This is rice flour. Yeah. Why rice flour over something else? It's just a little different texture. I think it's a little crispier, maybe than less crunchy, more crispy than wheat flour. Going for a fairly light coating here, so. What are we at? Right there. You ready? Close enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is peanut. I think it's actually blended peanut oil, so it's probably peanut and canola. But peanut oil really does fry better, unfortunately, because it's bloody expensive. Do not fill your pot this full of oil at home. Yeah. Good thing we're not on open probably going to take. I think they came up with that rule just for you, Colin. Yeah. Like to live dangerously. You got Colin coming? Yeah, no open flame, Derek. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Never started a significant kitchen fire. Not one that caused any insurance claims or anything. Down the soft crack again. Soft crack was 320? A little lower than that. A little lower? It'll be alright. You didn't want hot fish? Yes. <laughs> Oops. You're getting flour everywhere. Maybe. Not to make sure you can touch it. I was seeing if it was hot. I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. All right. You got any more stories? Um. 
Colin is a man of many stories. Yeah. But today he's silent. It's early. It's dry January. It's dry January. He doesn't have a cocktail. <laughs> I want to do a traditional Asian double fry on these guys. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For those watching that don't know what that means, what does that mean? A lot of a lot of Asian food, um, they fry stuff twice. So you fry it, take it out of the grease, get the grease really hot, and then fry it again just briefly. So that gets it all crispy, crispy. So if you're using less than ideal frying equipment like uh, we are right now, it's a good little uh, crutch. You can fry it to get it cooked and then... Get the oil really hot. I do that on my fries. Yeah, everyone, yeah, double fry your fries. Everyone's always. like, why are you french fries? So I drop fry them, it. pull them out, let them rest, drop them again. Absolutely. Yeah. Down to 230. <laughs> Get in on that creepy eyeball there. Yeah, it's really popping out there. Yeah. That'll haunt y'all. <laughs> haunt y'all later. Thank you. Ah, it's biting my thumb. <laughs> yeah, these aren't cooking real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a thing in the center of their eyes. It's like a calcified. Uh, yeah, yeah, all fish. Like you can eat parts of the eye if you're so inclined, but it's like a, it's like a marble. Yeah, I don't know if our eyes have those. I've never cooked a human eye. So. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not that he's going to admit to Yeah, no. Can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> so we're going to let this oil come back up to temperature. <laughs> we got these a nice medium rare now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times on Asian food, they double fry some so you can get a really crispy coating on the outside. Yeah. Also, this is now warm, so when you drop it in your oil, it doesn't drop the temperature so far. <laughs> or you just throw it in there until it turns brown. <laughs> that usually works too. Or when it floats. Everything's cooked when it floats. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, I think they were around a pound each. So these are nine ninety nine a pound at the seafood market locally, and yeah, it was like twenty three bucks for both of them. Obviously, it's yeah. not Kevin. Yeah. So obviously, it's not Kevin. It's not it's pretty good. Day. It's pretty fair price on fillets. The yield on there at the bottom. Vermilion snappers not great, just because they they've got a lot of head, kind of. So uh, most fish are like fifty percent. No, it's, we just were doing a uh, cooking demonstration. So yeah, real quick, I'm I'm on YouTube. Rule of thumb goes He's talking, up and down depending on the fish. But. That's what we're here for. We're here to raise awareness, and you're asking what we're doing, and we're out here cooking, and we're doing seafood presentations at the boat show. So. 
right now yeah. we're doing Vermillion Snapper. This is a buddy of mine, Colin. Yeah, it's crazy. And he's doing yeah, a yeah. Asian inspired yeah. Vermillion Yeah, North Snapper. Carolina so used to have a very robust uh, he's gonna commercial flounder fishery, color. but it's I'm pretty much collapsed. So so to, like, a lot of the flounder came out of North Carolina. And yeah. Yeah. It's delicious. There's not, not near as many flounder around here as there used to be either. Luke, right? <laughs> it's the main method is people go out at night with lights and spear them. Yeah. Up in the shallows. Oh man, we're like. Yeah, it was down to like 220. <laughs> That's on high, huh? Yeah, it's not the most powerful. Uh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe your fryer didn't work. I've got that one and it works great. Oh, you do? Yeah. I had it. I lost it or left it somewhere. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can take it as your compensation. You can take it. I'll give you the receipt. You're going to turn it and get a new one. <laughs> That'll be your compensation. Perfect. Because otherwise, I was just going to like blow it up or something. Throw it away. <laughs> no. I was going to do what I do just shoot it or blow it up. I mean, I think we still got some tannerite. Got to get your blowing stuff up out of your system in case the farm sells. <laughs> Michaela said she wants to come out next time we blow something up. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Pretty fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're getting close there, Chef. We're getting there. Slowly but sure. Is that a corn nut truck over there? <laughs> uh, it's a Peruvian, yeah. He said we can get in there with the camera later and walk around. Hey. Have you had Peruvian? No, but popcorn? I love corn nuts, so. It's unique. It's unique. It looked like he handed me like a a handful of um, just the popcorn kernels from the bottom of that. The uncooked ones. And I was like really worried. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna crush my teeth here. But it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> We look at it. I think it'll probably heat up faster. You want to look at it? Put it on camera. <laughs> put it on camera. It'll heat up. That's what he said. Look at that. Eye. Don't play with the eyeball. Are you playing with your food? <laughs> look at that smirk he's got. <laughs> These are going to be delicious. Is my prediction. Yeah. They're going to be worth the wait, folks. <laughs> Can we get a spoon from one of these food trucks? Are you going to eat the eyeball? <laughs> Do I dare you? Uh-oh. What's it going to take to get you to eat the eyeball? Uh, got to dare me. You got to eat one, too. Oh, jeez. Back to Colin. Look at those eyeballs. Yum. <laughs> it's just relabeled beer there. 
Is it relabeled? <laughs> it's not light that they put another label on. <laughs> Custom labels. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not gonna put that on camera in case I get sued. <laughs> I can't say BL. <laughs> Do you want me to ask any special questions for uh, the show? It's all this guy. Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah, I love Bronzino. They're pretty readily available these days, too. They're farming a good bit of them in Europe. Yeah. yeah. Actually, they do it Oh, really? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Huh. I, I assume they're farmed on land in Connecticut. I, I can't imagine they're allowed to put them in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The land-based fish farming is, you know, like that's the future of a lot of seafood production, I think. Still got ways to go. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I do that with some of the larger ones of these usually. We catch them out in the deep water like that are about that big. <laughs> like, they get big. Used to when I went fishing. I don't go fishing anymore. His uh, his boss said, "Yeah, come work for me. I'll, I have a boat. I got all this stuff." And then they sold the boats. That was part of my job was riding the boats, and then the boats are gone. Now I'm working in an office. So the only time he gets on a boat is when they send him out to my boat. <laughs> Yeah. Nope. Bait and switch. All right. Slowly but surely. We're going to get hot this time. No, I've heard it's spectacular. My brother in law is from Wisconsin, so. Not super expensive, but everything is like, yeah, some good Braun and stuff. They, um, they do, they, uh, they, they drive up there once a month to get a big order, like with all the folks in the career, maybe about a month ago. Talking about what they did, like, like, they talk all funny, <laughs> they say big. <laughs> love, love giving my brother in law a hard time. Pop. Ah. Bagel, he says bagel. <laughs> I don't make it to James Island often. Sure. Ten restaurants next to the hotel, so we got to walleye. None of them have walleye. Hour later, we had our walleye. <laughs> I, I mean, say walleye is the best freshwater fish. There's a big, there's a big walleye fishing circuit, tournament circuit, and. Within the last year, or one of the somebody got busted with like the weight pounds of lead the in the gut of this walleye. They were trying to cheat. <laughs> was, Apparently, they've been doing it for a long time. It was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. They had, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was like it, yeah, obvious. Like the the fish was like, <laughs> yeah, there's no way that fish was that heavy. Yeah, and it's just like, oh my god, dropping weights in it. That yeah, was nuts. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. Apparently, still works. <laughs> There's been a lot of mix-ups in the tournament fishing late or in the past few years. Uh, the the uh, was it the white marlin open or the big rock? Where they big? 
I don't think Big Rock. A few it? years ago, they had a controversy where somebody had bought their fishing license on the way in with Ooh. the winning fish, and they disqualified them for a million. It was a one point four million dollar fish or something, oh, wow. and the mate or something hadn't didn't have their proper fishing license, and they determined from his records that he had purchased it on the way in. And, and the White Marlin Open, which is the richest tournament in the world, they had one a few years ago where it's a two million dollar fish, and the they had they have to take a lie detector on some of those tournaments, and they had determined that they had put lines in before. The fishing time was allotted, so don't cheat, folks. <laughs> well, it might have been. Nowadays, you can't get by with Yeah. Yeah, especially when there's multi-million dollars. Did that mate lose his job? <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> Quiet ride. Oh man, that's an honest mistake. The not having your license, the uh, saying putting lines in early is cheating. <laughs> I'm going to try and get it to like 375 this time if we can wait that long. <laughs> what are we at? 330. Oh, God. <laughs> we were at 220. We're <laughs> we were at 220 uh, yeah, after the pitch. So. Yeah. No, so um, Jeff, uh, his wife just got induced, and he texted me last night and was like, please don't hate me, but... Um, uh, I was induced, I understand. I'm not going to tell you not to. That sounds like an excuse. I, I don't want to yeah. see the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I need a picture or it didn't happen. Produce the baby with the, with the today's newspaper. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so nobody argues with the habit of baby. Although it's every weekend for like a month, you might. No, Jeff's <laughs> Jeff. When I did my live stream in July, Jeff was out twice with me. Jeff's a stand-up guy. I mean, he buys. Where is he? He's a he's the executive chef for Miller's all day. Oh, nice. So he runs the the two kitchens, the one James Island in downtown, and then the food truck. Nice. You haven't been there yet. So. It's it's a breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Oh, yes, yeah, we look. It's like a breakfast, but mostly breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to Use Guys? No. It's on uh, it's on Folly Road. It's a a Philly guys sandwich shop. The Phillies are good. The Phillies are good. The Italian is killer. Really good. Slice to order. It's a little tiny hole in the wall place. You wouldn't see, yeah, you almost don't see it's it. It's so good. It's very close to here. I drive 35 minutes to go there sometimes. It's like the public house. It's not there. Yeah. It's a great tomato soup. 340. He's at 340. He's just live randomly, he's, the, uh, he's randomly shouting out the, uh, temperature. the temperature on the... We're waiting for 375. Oh. Five minutes, Jeff. We're waiting for 3.75. And so he's just, he's letting us know where we're at. <laughs> Not quite to the deep fry line. <laughs> to the all-important deep fry line. On the boat, I have a 40-pound deep fryer. A real deep like, fryer. Because you can't do a cooking show in the South without the ability to fry food. I'm kind of <laughs> a skin graph or a deep fryer? I burned myself in the oven. I was making tomato soup like about a month ago and I was stirring it and I stuck my finger in the soup. Mm. Oh my God, with that layer of hot olive oil on top of it just to get you extra no, good. I, I'm really afraid of deep fryer. <laughs> <laughs> just gently drop it in away from you and stand back. Have it dry. Drop. Yeah. No water. <laughs> yeah, videos. Nuclear turkeys. When I was in uh, Georgia filming with Alfred and Andy, we were cooking with Andy, and um, 
he, he was getting ready to prepare that Christmas turkey. And I was like, isn't that supposed to be frozen? And he's like, Derek, don't say that on a live stream. And I'm like, <laughs> what, isn't it supposed to be frozen? It's like, you just killed somebody. You burnt their house down. Some rednecks porch is burning down now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad and my grandfather were both firefighters. and It's like the busiest day of the year, isn't it? Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, yeah. I mean, people just burn their freaking house New down. Years, maybe. Was it? Frying a turkey. Yeah, not too great. I enjoy it, but very happy with somebody else. Yeah. That's one thing I don't want to learn. Wind's switching around. Yeah. Give me some more tents flying. Tree fitty. Slowly but surely. Um, yeah, I cook a lot of st- a lot of different stuff, but my one of my signature dishes is shrimp wontons with that sauce actually, and crispy fried garlic and garlic oil on it. Pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Shrimp or lobster, depending on what we're what we got. <laughs> no, it's um, just a sh- like a pureed or chopped shrimp filling or lobster or shrimp and lobster depending and then i just do them in wontons and they're steamed or they're boiled and then the sauce goes on them they're good crunchy garlic on top of them it's really good it's also the thing i messed up most cooking is crispy garlic see it's really hard to get it fried where it's crunchy but it's like and it's bitter and burnt, and you got to start over. <laughs> just a little bit of, yeah, just in a pan with just oil, any neutral oil. Yeah, I love a confit or oven roasted garlic. I love, I love to do cherry tomatoes and garlic, a good bit of olive oil, some rosemary, and some fish sauce actually. Instead of you know, instead of using anchovies for a lot of stuff, it's easier to use fish sauce. So. And then I do those in the oven for like an hour and a half at 350 or something. Spread those on grilled bread. It's good. It here. Yeah. We got a pretty decent tomato farm in my backyard in the summer, so that's one of our use up the tomatoes. I haven't tried it, but it's usually I just grab Yeah. I go back and forth. I've decided it's better just buy starts. What do you like? Which varieties do you like here? Um, the tomatoes, surprisingly, people think like, oh, the South tomatoes, but it gets too hot here to grow tomatoes in the summer, summer. So, like, I try to get plants and start them as like as early as you can. And the cherry tomatoes I found have a lot better. They last a lot better into the summer season than the large tomatoes, but yeah, um, yeah, just gotta get them like where you have to cover them when it freezes. Essentially, like you gotta start them early, and they still takes a while for them to take it off because they like hot, you know, they like warm soil. But um, uh, Mr. Stripey is our best large size tomato we found. We we it, it's you know it lasts like four weeks you're getting tomatoes off of it but like we've grown some that were like this big and they're excellent slicing tomato you know mr stripey mr stripey it's like a yellow and red striped tomato where do you get it most garden centers usually lowe's has them um i like himes they're great can't beat himes roots and shoots is good too Never had much luck with tomatoes. Start wrong and you wait and wait for the tomato and then right before somebody. Oh, yeah. One time I had this big tomato that I was had been watching, you know, for like months and it was finally getting there. And I get home and I get out of my car and I shut the door and it falls in the driveway in front of me. A freaking squirrel had it in a tree. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was no. like, <laughs> I was. It's very heartbreaking. Uh, I'd rather go and buy it in the store. Yeah. 
It is. It's an emotional experience growing tomatoes. Uh, we tried to pineapple. It was doing pretty good, and all of a sudden, one day it was gone. And then I found it in the bushes, and I guess some the, the, the neighborhood of Possum Ridge. Yep. Had a party. Had enjoyed it. Yeah, they take like a year too, or more, to grow a pineapple around here. Okra can grow all hot summer here, and then I grow. We grow these yard-long beans. They're a green bean, but they're this big, and they they'll crank. They're an Asian long bean, but cut them up they taste just like a green bean and they grow all the way through the heat and they beans usually when you pull them off you know that flower stalk is done these you pull them off and it grows another one from every site so they just eventually you're really tired of them Burp. we're almost to the deep fry line folks uh oh okay. we're getting there i'm ready Hoping to get a taste here. Sure. Oh, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll plate it up and get a couple pictures for social media, and then we'll bring out forks and everyone can dig in. Dig in. We'll make some boats and. Where in Nashville are you guys? Actually, right one. Gotcha. Yeah, sure. My best high school buddies is does essentially infill development. They're mostly in East Nashville, you know, where all the hipsters are. So. Oh, yeah. I know what's great is the, um, where a lot of the big food scene is in Germantown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an alternate Yeah. We settled another little Uh huh. A lot of Charleston restaurants going up there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, sure. Like seven different barbecue Definitely. <laughs> the Loveless Cafe, you ever been there? Chicken, fried chicken and biscuits. The biscuits are their thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's an old, like, brick building, and they turned it to a restaurant. They just did, like, uh, horseshoes and horses. Uh-huh. A furrier? Created, I mean, Christmas, it's incredible. In New York City, there's this restaurant called Rolf's. It's a real Italian restaurant. Uh-huh. They start decorating Christmas in early October <laughs> and take it down in March. And all anybody wants to do is go eat at Rolf's because it's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. October, yeah, months out. So anyway, this place, guys, I got maybe they figured that out, but they decorated Christmas like great, beautiful, gorgeous, and then the back room with all the Christmas trees. Yeah, yeah, nice. All right, we're going back in, folks. That's what you don't do, right there. Hello. Now we're frying something. Yeah. It's right here. You're just looking for it to brown up, huh? Yep, just getting some color on them, getting them crisped up. Almost there. I think we're going to put them down on the rack before 
It might be a one-way trip down. Might be a one-way. Pretty delicate. You need me to hold? Um, I'm good right now. Not yet, I don't think. You got it here? <laughs> You blew it! You blew it! You had one job and you blew it. Stuck. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to Frank and fish it back together. You got skewers in there. <laughs> Never happened. What was Fred telling you about the other day? Fish blue. She she didn't do a good job. She what, she did a great job, but she cut one little piece off, didn't you? What was you yesterday with Fred? Oh yeah, we were back together. All right, what do you think? I think we need to get a picture of you with the fish. We need to cover this guy up. That never happened there. How'd you get in the picture with him? Get him trouble with him. Nah. Nah. Probably turn our... Turn that off. You want to hold it or you want to hold it? I don't know. What do you think? That? Yeah, she's. <laughs> Alright. Little vermilion snapper with uh, Vietnamese herb salad and. There should, should be a box of forks back there. Let's guess. Uh, are there some boats left if they want to make you? Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's spicy, probably. They're still in there. They just shrunk back into their home. I guess we can, I'll dish some up here. It'd probably be the easiest thing, huh? All right, well, Colin dishes that up. Um, I'm going to go in for a bite real quick. Yeah, first let, we got to test it, I guess. We're going to let y'all go. But uh, 
Thanks for hanging out with us. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's really good. It was well worth the wait. And uh, we got a crowd of people here about to dive in. So uh, we're going to let y'all go. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, I'm not-